Do you desperately love your husband or your wife, but find yourself feeling exhausted from endless disagreements and power struggles? The lack of intentionality that we have in the area of our love life leads to a lot of the conflict that happens between husbands and wives. Like what has happened to us? Uh, if you have grown up uh, in the age of having uh, every family has a, has a TV in the home, then part of your conditioning when it comes to marriage has been that love will find a way, <laughs> right? That love happens, that you fall in love. And so what this actually creates is a lack of intentionality with respect to looking at the factual circumstances of your marriage or any relationship. But I, I am speaking specifically about marriages. Um, it leads to a lack of intentionality in the area of examining the circumstances so that you can what? You can make decisions or choices that will enhance or create the, env the environment for love. Love is an opportunity creation environment. In fact, I will also challenge you to understand that love is actually a legal operation. And I will go in depth in that in a, in a whole nother series of conversations. But I'll, I'll tell you really quickly that love is a legal operation because it is your power to choose mercy or to overlook something that someone does wrong to you rather than choosing vengeance or wrath, extreme anger. <laughs> so love is a judicial act. It is a legal act, but I, I'm not going to dive into that right now. I want to really help you understand what a relationship contract is. A contract is an agreement. There is uh, something that two or more people agree to do. That's that's the most simple uh, definition of a contract. And when two or more people agree to whatever the thing is in the contract or the set of things, so contracts can be super simple or they could be very complex. So when we're talking about marriage, we're talking about complex contracts. But these things that you agree to now have the legal operation of law in your relationship. The fact that we do not think about that on a conscious level is part of the main reason why so many marriages are engaged in power struggle. Because what a power struggle is or what a conflict is, it's the absence of agreement. That's simply what it is. It's the absence of agreement. Why am I going there from a contractual perspective? Because if you understand that your relationship or the way that you are interacting with others, specifically here, your husband or your wife, the environment or the atmosphere of this relationship is governed by what we already agree to. And therefore, the things that you do not agree to will interrupt the harmony of your relationship because you need to deal with the issue. Now, what do most people do? If you're anything like me, then you're probably a runner. <laughs> You'd rather avoid a conversation than engage. Maybe because your, your husband or your wife has a fighting style that's off-putting, you know, that, that makes you uncomfortable, that makes you feel disrespected. And for that reason, a lot of people avoid the negotiation table, the renegotiation table, which is how you love again. You renegotiate the terms, you find agreement. You use this conflict as an opportunity to get on the same page because when you are on the same page with your sweetheart, that's where heaven is on earth. Like that is what the wedding day is about. That is why we have pictures of it so that we don't forget. In this moment, there was an exchange of promises. This is contract law, y'all. Exchange of promises. And now the vows of this marriage ceremony are the law that operates in our marriage. Marriage is the journey then of continuing to develop amend, refine, or renegotiate 
the specific terms of your marriage that appear as you are journeying through life together. Because the person who you married 20 years ago is not the same person who you're married to today. And when that happens, a lot of people lose heart or they just give up on hope or they just they 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 don't see themselves as the person who wanted to be with their husband or their wife. And a lot of times by simply just coming back to the table and having a conversation about renegotiating the deal, right? The, our vows and the things that we agree to, we agree we're going to be together. I'm yours, you're mine. Better or worse, whether you're sick, whether you're healthy. And that is the framework for the marriage agreement. What we do, though, we expect for love to take over or emotions to take over. And that emotions are somehow going to settle everything. But that is the exact opposite of your power to enter into the conversation with your husband or with your wife concerning the facts and the circumstances and the things that you would propose that will bring peace into the situation. Because if your husband or your wife accepts your proposal for how to bring peace into the situation, once there is agreement, there is peace. There is instant peace when there is agreement. Why do people fall out of agreement? One really, really big issue that I have observed over my years as a family law attorney for nearly 14 years now, a really, really big one is when people get married and they become the person that they think their husband or their wife wants them to be. Here is what's happening contractually. You are agreeing to another person to be someone that you are not, which means that you disagree with your true self. I'm asking you to really consider this. If this is you, if you are someone who your representative is who married your husband or your wife and not your true self, you were hiding who you really are and you showed up and exchanged vows pretending to be someone that you're not. I need you. I really, really need you to hear what I am saying right now because I have seen too many families terminate as a direct result of this dynamic. And I'm going to share with you what the principle, the law is, which is creating this problem. You are so afraid of being by yourself, of not having the object of your affection, that you, you lie to yourself in order to be what you think someone else wants. When you are lying to yourself, you are automatically operating in what I call strife, conflict. Your internal conflict, because you are not keeping it real, because you are really not being yourself, because you are afraid of your husband or your wife finding out who you really are, you will continue to bring that con conflict into your relationship with your husband or your wife. And it doesn't matter what y'all talk about. Oh, you want me to do more around the house. You want me to spend more time with you. You want me, you're, you're going to come up with all these checklists of things to do. And then you're going to attempt to check off every box and perform so that you can show up and make someone else happy. Or this other person comes back and shows up and checks off boxes to make you happy. And you will not have peace. And the reason why you don't have peace is because somebody's lying. You cannot have somebody else and show up for anybody else. When you are lying to yourself, I have hotline bling during my live, y'all, and I apologize. Something else is ringing and I need to turn it off. I can't find it, so I'm just keep it moving. <laughs> so you cannot have peace with another this is a law this is a law this is a law I, I need you to hear me 
sharing contract law with you right now concerning your relationship with others. You cannot have peace with another person when you are in conflict with yourself. And you cannot be at peace with yourself until you tell yourself the truth. If you are lying to yourself because of your fear of being alone, because you want this person more than anything else in the world, even to the point where you're willing to lie to yourself, you will be in conflict and your relationship will be in turmoil. This is an underlying, um, it's an inconsistency in the actual contract that you made with your husband or wife. You actually have an opposing contract running as an app in the background that is creating the conflict to your vows because you first need to keep the truth to yourself before you can be honest with your husband or your wife. This is how you get to a place where you love again. You will love again in your marriage when you take the time to love you. And to put it in a way that my life coach puts it, and she knows how much I love her. She's been married and walking in marriage for nearly 40 years. When you learn how to love you, as she says, horns, warts, thorns, and all, then you can authentically show up at the negotiation table with your husband or your wife and enter into harmony where you're loving each other. But if you are expecting your husband or wife to love you and you don't love yourself enough to tell you the truth, you will perpetually have conflict in your relationship. Your husband or your wife will not be able to bring peace into your relationship and you will not feel fulfillment, joy or contentment in your marriage. You will always sense that something is missing because you are lying. And you're not keeping it real. So what many people want to do, they want to go and they want to deal with the marriage by pointing at each other. Oh, you need to do this or you need to do that. And giving each other a set of demands before they first got super honest in their own corner and worked out their internal conflict, their internal contracts their own belief system. Why am I lying so that I could be with you? Why am I not being my true self so that you can be happy? That's the first question to ask when understanding how do I love again? You have a contract problem. And many times it does start with the relationship you have with yourself. I'm Shar, founder of Law for Love, the most special place in the legal system in Atlanta. And I love you.